It's hard to believe, but it's now been three months since that devastating Lahaina fire. And while Lahaina respectfully remains closed to the public, Maui is inviting visitors to return to the island to help with the healing process. Joining me now in this sponsored interview is Hawaii Tourism Authority's Mike White. And Mike, you are a veteran in the hospitality industry, a longtime resident of Maui. How are the people doing there months after that devastating fire? Well, Misha, as you can imagine, they're still hurting and everyone's navigating through this uh, process a little bit differently. And it's going to take time to, to process, to heal and to focus on rebuilding their lives. But, you know, the people of Maui are very resilient, they're hardworking and they have a lot of aloha towards each other. And with that combination, we're going to come through this just fine. But it's important to realize that nearly 85% of our jobs are partially or totally dependent on tourism. So the return of visitors is critical to Maui's recovery. So Mike, let's talk about the island. Was it all mm -hmm. affected by the fire or has most of it remained open? Well, actually the vast majority of Maui is unaffected and untouched by the fires and has remained open. Lahaina, as you mentioned, uh, is closed out of respect to the community. But Lahaina is a small pocket in West Maui where most accommodations have reopened. Meanwhile, the rest of Maui, like Kahului, Wailuku, Kihei, Wailea, Upcountry, and Hana, have remained open and are welcoming visitors. Oh, Mike, and I've been to all of those locations that you just mentioned, <laughs> and I love every single spot. How important is it for visitors to go back, not just to Hawaii, but to Maui? And what can they expect when they get there? What's changed? Well, you know, Maui is a very special place. We say Maui no Ka'oi because we feel Maui is the best. But if you love Maui, then we'd love to welcome you back. And if you haven't been here, then it's time you came. But Maui has incredible beauty found nowhere else in the world. You can wake up in the morning and walk through a rainforest in the afternoon, take a stroll on the mountaintops, or go to an upcountry ranch. Or you can take time to stop at a roadside farm stand and pick up a pineapple. You can uh, enjoy a world-class meal prepared by Maui's award-winning chefs, or go to the Ocean Center where, we're, where we are today and learn about Hawaii's marine life. It's a fabulous place to be. Mike, it's that and, spirit of aloha that just is infused in every single thing you do in Maui. How are the residents, and what do you say to those who say, I'm reluctant to visit the island in wake of the tragedy? Well, if you're reluctant, you're exactly the type of person that we'd like to welcome back, because that means you're thoughtful, you're sensitive and empathetic. And, you know, Maui needs to recover, but at the same time, part of the recovery is getting back to work. And um, so we're, we're ready to provide the aloha that Maui has been known for for all these years. Mike, that rooster behind you, I think, wants us all to take a little visit. <laughs> Absolutely. He's, he's calling for you, Misha. He's been busy. He's been busy there. So are you <laughs> noticing tourism pick back up? Yes, it's picking back up, but it's a gradual growth. And that's really what we're comfortable with because the, the recovery is going to be gradual. And uh, so it's, it's something that we th feel is very appropriate at this time. Well, Utah absolutely loves Hawaii. Utahns love Maui, and we are sending all of our love in the wake of that devastating fire. Mike, thank you so much for chatting with us this morning and the Hawaii Tourism Authority for sponsoring this interview. Mahalo. Take care. Thank you, Misha, and aloha to Salt Lake City in Utah. Thanks, Mike.